Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon, you're watching Israeli News Live, and uh, guys, we got our internet going here just a couple hours ago, I've really not had enough time to get in depth in the news as of yet, uh, but I just want to give you guys a little bit of a heads up on a couple of things, actually the video we did um, uh, just recently about going over to Israel. We got one report uh, that they could not actually watch the video in the United States. Now, I did send uh, the video privately to about four friends there on Facebook there, and I did get back a few reports that everything was good, at least on the link that I sent them. But if you seem to be having the same problem that the video has been banned in America, I would definitely like to know. So let us know in the comments here. Uh, on that, uh, but according to one person that emailed us, they actually banned that video, and it really made no sense for them to ban it because all I'm doing is talking about uh, going to Israel because of this uh, this world religion thing that they're doing, the three different faiths coming together, and how we're going there to cover it from a news perspective, and the fact that it may be that the Pope is going there. Didn't say he was or was not, but uh, at least from what I see there, one person said the video was listed as banned in America. That's just a little bit on the odd size. Anyway, let me just kind of give you a few things here that is going on that's really concerning to me because it only uh, ratchets up the tensions going on all over the world. And as we can see here, Russia is definitely digging in and they are starting to do the exact same thing that NATO has been doing under the Obama administration's push all over the world to put troops all around Russia. Now Russia is starting to do the same thing. Uh, Russia offers to send ground troops to Syria's Aleppo. It's going to be the first time uh, other than just trainers on the ground that they've spoken about before to where Russia literally has military troops on the ground. Now that's going to be very interesting to see how this ends up. That's a lot of different troops in this country on the ground. The U.S. has troops. Uh, Russia actually having ground troops. Also the Chinese coming in with ground troops. As we said, you're looking at Daniel 11 in a whole new way, guys. And I can't wait to come back to Daniel 11 again because I'm going to share with you some things about that King of the South that's really going to shake you up a little bit that God has showed me about that uh, and how that I really think that Netanyahu really is that King of the South. As you know, uh, Mike Evans is the one that anointed him to be King over Israel back before he ever entered into politics and said it prophesied over him, said he would be uh, Prime Minister over Israel, not once, but twice. But when you anoint a man, you anoint him as king, not as a prime minister. So it's really concerning to me uh, looking at this and then seeing how that Netanyahu has really put a lot of pressure on Rome, not allowing this peace agreement to go through. He's definitely been pushing at the king of the north until finally the Pope turns around and sits there and declares a Palestinian state. Well, that's letting him know that he's had just about enough. And since then, NATO's forces have been in the Middle East just wreaking havoc ever since. Uh, now, let's go from there. Russia, as I said, looking to put ground troops in Aleppo. Very, uh, very tough situation there. Russia also to garrison a division less than 100 kilometers from the U.S. border. Guys, that's going up there near Alaska there. You know, they've already put a lot of soldiers up there around the North Pole, especially near Finland, areas like that, uh, and Norway guarding the natural resources that are there on the North Pole. Now Putin is moving in a garrison, a division less than 100 kilometers from the U.S. border, actually 85 kilometers from U.S. border, which is about, oh, I don't know, 50 miles from the United States as far as Alaska. Now, just keep in mind, I did state this in a news broadcast, oh, some, quite a few months back when we first saw Russia building up their forces in the Arctic, and at that time, it wasn't anywhere near Alaska, but one of my points was, was that I believe that if Russia ever launched an attack on the U.S., they may do it from the side of Alaska in order to be able to sweep through, because that's the weak spot for the United States. They're not very fortified in that area. So anyway, they're talking about it. It has been no secret that Russia is building up its forces in the Arctic region as the Kremlin covets and wants to protect future access to natural resources in the region. Russia also actively preparing to militarize its eastern 
uh, coastline with large number of troops to be garrisoned from the near the U.S. border in Alaska to the Kuril Islands in the south, currently disputed with Japan. The new forces scheduled to arrive in 2018 will be at closest 85 kilometers to the U.S. border. Now that's giving you that. Then comes another issue here. This is in Crimea and also on the border of Ukraine. Russia shifts fighter jets, bombers to bolster the aerospace forces fleets in Ukraine. What have they done? They pulled the fighter jets out and they've moved bombers in, into Crimea. Guys, this isn't a, this isn't a move that's going to be, that's going to come away without uh, re repercussions, no doubt. Russia's advanced bombers and jet fighters have been relocated to western part of Russia. As a part of a SNAP uh, combat readiness inspection, MiG-39 and MiG-31 fighter jets have been relocated to the mainland Russia, while Su-34 bombers have been moved to Crimea Peninsula. All right. Uh, so, you know, a lot of times when Russia starts doing their, their drills and stuff, sometimes things don't go so good. They end up in war a little bit later. So uh, just a little bit concerning there on what's going on there. Uh, and this here, U.S. not involved, uh, not involved, not supporting clashes between Syrian militia and Turkey. And of course, this is where Erdogan has got his forces there trying to wipe out the Kurds as much as he can. Now, the U.S. did tell the Kurds to pull back on the other side of the, um, on the other side of the, uh, the, the river there. And, but that's not gone, gone too well for the Kurds because they have fought very hard to push ISIS out of this area. And now Erdogan saying he's going to push ISIS out of Jabalis uh, only is there to push the Kurds out. And now he's starting to admit that that's the reason why he's really there. So they're in there murdering the Kurds who have been doing the best fighting all along, which really kind of irritates me with Russia and with the United States because Russia has said that the best fighters against ISIS is the Kurds, and yet he's allowing Erdogan just to run all over them. And the United States sitting there talking about their typical rhetoric of, uh, uh, you know, we need to calm the situation, stop the clashes, and we need to have talks and things of this nature. You know, listen. The Obama administration, I have to say this to you guys, you say that they, sh that they need to calm down and have talks. Well, guess what? The Kurds were there in Geneva, Switzerland. We were there. Israeli News Live was in Geneva, Switzerland. We were at the same hotel that your radical rebels that were fighting Bashar al-Assad were at. And the odd thing was the Kurds were staying in some hotel around the corner and they were not even allowed to be involved in the talks. They were thrown under the bus while the rebels got their way. Well, just goes to show the talks don't really matter, does it? It's nothing but lip service. Anyway, guys, these are the headlines that we're kind of watching as of right now. Again, kind of getting late here, close to midnight at this time here. Uh, so I don't really have a chance to really get into a lot of other things there. Uh, so anyway, uh, a lot of things are going on. By the way, too, Gene Wilder passed away today, 83 years old. Uh, so many movies that man was in. And uh, of course, it, it's, it's more of a thing for, for us because Gene was a Jewish actor. Uh, so we certainly would be missed. He, he did live a long life and had a very, very, um, uh, very interesting career. Of course, uh, those that are into movies, I'm not as much into them, but I know every, every person probably in America knows about the Willy Wonka's Candy Factory, a movie that really put Gene Wilder uh, in the spotlight of stardom. But he was a writer, actor, everything, and uh, he will no doubt be missed by millions of fans around the world. And, uh, and as we mentioned earlier today, they have elected, the Sanhedrin has elected a high priest which did bring into one thing into mind, especially when I was looking at some of the comments today. I, haven't, I don't get much of a chance to respond because so many comments are coming in daily. But one person asked, what's his lineage? I'd like to see his lineage, kind of paraphrasing their question there. And that's a very good point because you know what they call Levites today are not the real Levites. It can't be because even Rabbi Tobia Singer, who has stated publicly that the Pharisees of 2,000 years ago are the Orthodox Jews of today. Now, I agree with him. That's very true. I agree with him on that. 
But you have to remember, those Pharisees of 2,000 years ago were not the true Levites. The Sadduc, the Sadduc priesthood had already gone down to Qumran. They were thrown out. This was after the Maccabee revolt, where the Maccabees, which they did a wonderful job, the Maccabee brothers, as far as getting the temple back into the, the, the hands of the, of the Jewish people. But the Zadokite priesthood was finally overthrown. One of the Maccabee brothers and then you know, wanted to take the place, the, the office of a high priest. He was not called for that, and we know that good and well. Uh, he was taken out, and of course it changed hand again, and we ended up with a Hashmonean dynasty, which is not the Levites. So those Orthodox Jews today trying to take the office of a high priest are totally out of God's divine will. You cannot be a high priest. You cannot be a high priest if you're not a true Levite. And you'd have to find somebody that was related to the Zadokite priesthood. You know what? Get some DNA off the bones down there in Qumran, if, you can, if there's any bones been found down there, and then check your DNA with that, and then you'll find out who the real Levites should be. Maybe the two witnesses will settle that issue when they come on the scene. I sure hope so anyway. In fact, if, once they come on the scene, keep in mind, you got Moses and Eliyahu there. Moshe is definitely a Levite. So I guess your high priest will come back then. That's when the high priest will be there, and then you'll find out exactly what should be done. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom and good evening.